this isn't like something I read in a textbook or, um, you know, found in an ancient Sanskrit that I um, dug out of the pyramids of Giza or something. This is like just sort of empirical knowledge from having tried things over and over and over and paying attention to, to what worked and what didn't. Um, and what I've found is that there's a lot of wrong ways, <laughs> unfortunately, to do this, right? And, and so what I, what, like how the, the idea of sort of these three phases has come about is uh, honestly through making a lot of mistakes through the years and not doing it right and uh, doing some things right from the start. Like my, my intuition on a few things has been good, but a lot of things it hasn't. And, um, and so because of that, I sort of, um, I've gotten into this uh, mode through the years of, of, of testing micro steps, like not, not jumping too far ahead ever, because uh, the mistake is that, that the mistake I've made, which I know a lot of people have made, is you get a, ahead of yourself and you, and you start building the thing and you haven't done these preliminary steps. And then you end up with this thing that either isn't the right thing that people want or is a thing that nobody wants or you never finish the thing. So you never even get to have that. Um, like, like one of the, the challenges with building something that you're creating yourself is, is running through the tape and, and getting to the end. And one of the things that, at least for me and my personality type, that, that helps me to run through the tape and get to, to the end is having positive validation on the front end yeah. that is spurring me along, you know, that people are paying for it or that they are, have bought it and are interested or whatever. And um, a lot of times I end up with unfinished projects if I don't have customers. And, and, and so that's where this sort of uh, three phases and iterative process has developed is, um, you know, the first step is just uh, striking oil, just finding out like it's the wildcatting. It's, it's going out there and finding out, um, you know, is there oil in the ground? And the second part is, can I get it out of the ground at a profit, like economically? And, um, you know, if the oil is a hundred miles deep or something, then, um, you know, <laughs> it might not be worth drilling it. Right. But, but, uh, sometimes you got oil just underneath the ground and you, you just tap it and psh, the geyser starts spitting out. And well, there's the, the Beverly Hillbillies, right? Like he was out hunting a rabbit and, uh, took a shot, missed the rabbit, hit the ground and boom, the, the starts gusher bubbling began. crude starts bubbling oil, crude. And yeah. it's like, there is pent up demand in every single audience, right? Every niche market, every hobbyist, there's, there's these things that if they, if they were out there and if they knew about them, no brainer. Like there, there's that, and that's the the like how easy is this oil to get out kind of conversation versus some of the more complex types of sales that required all of these crazy processes and you got to stack the beliefs and like it's technically doable. It's easier when you have a ton of skills and experience, but it's the long hard way and risk versus reward is I think one of the things that you're talking about here is like, so we're risking our time and often some money in ad budgets and tools and this, that, but a lot of the time it's really our time to build the thing. So let's maybe have a clear idea that indeed there's a reward for me to risk, you know, like if I'm going to put it in the time, I should know beforehand. So the, the, uh, what, what we're helping you not do, which you and I have both done is spend six months creating something people don't want and, uh -huh. or creating, spending six months creating something that never actually gets finished because we just keep scope creep. Just, we just, Oh, well, then I could add this on, then I could have this and then I could have that. And it becomes this thing that, that is overwhelming and it never gets done versus it's a Franken, it's a Franken product, right? It's like, you just, let me, let me stick a head on. And then let me, you know, it's like, it's Frankenstein that just every part. A couple of bolts in the neck. That, that's right. And Franken products are the worst. It's, yeah. it's much better to have one product to solve one problem, you know? And um, exactly. So, sorry. Perfect. So, yeah. Um, so the first part uh, really like, is there oil here? The second part was, can I get it out profitably? What, what's the third part? 
Well, so, so that's all part one. Okay. Gotcha. So that's, that's step one is just discovery. It's the wildcatting process. It's, it's like, okay, I want to find out if it's actually there and can I get it out economically? Uh, part two is what I call building the pump. And so if you find oil, then you've got to put together a mechanism to get it out of the ground. Right. And, and so there's, there's a couple of pieces to this. There's, the getting eyeballs on my thing piece. And then once the eyeballs are on, turning them into paying clients or customers. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of like, you know, in the parlance of the internet marketing world is traffic and conversion. And yeah. so based on what type of oil well that you are um, running, <clears throat> sometimes there are platforms where traffic is all, it's, it's automated and it's there. You know, like if you're on, some of these sites like um, uh, Amazon or, or the print on demand sites or Etsy or some of those things, they've got a ready-made ecosystem right there for you. You just got to put your stuff out. Yep. You might have to hustle a little bit to get some traffic to it, but it's not like just a website out in the ether, you know? Um, and, and also with some of those, which I think are good ideas to, you know, for your first product, if you've never done this before, <clears throat> the 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 actual conversion mechanism is is kind of templated out and a easily able to to have and then um the 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 i would say the trade-off is the the more someone else has put together the traffic and someone else has put together the conversion mechanism the smaller the amount you're going to make per sale usually um, but that's okay because it's that zero to one idea like if you've never done anything before making five dollars a sale is still good because you're yeah. you're learning right and then eventually you can transition into having your own traffic system and your own pump and your own stuff so you can turn five dollars a sale into fifty dollars a sale maybe um but but you know so so phase two is actually getting that pump just pumping out the oil consistently right and and take, you know, doing, doing the, the, the actual heavy lifting of putting it in front of people and having those people buy it. Um, so that's phase two. And I never recommend building phase two before phase one, which is right. again, what I've done a bunch of times. Um, and then phase three, uh, do you have any questions about phase two? No, man, I think it makes perfect sense. I, I, I want to reiterate the idea that leveraging platforms that already have traffic is going to allow you to test the ideas and test the potential of kind of like, like what's the depth of this marketplace? Like how big is this, this pocket of oil? Um, so like Etsy was an example that you brought up. Uh, you can, people are selling spreadsheets on Etsy for, for everything from budgeting and whatnot, and they're running pay-per-click Etsy ads. So in that kind of a scenario, Etsy is getting a cut for the transaction because they built the platform that you're running on, but they handle the shopping cart and all of those bits and pieces. And obviously they're getting a cut for the pay-per-click ad. But when you know you have a marketplace that has X, Y, Z number of people on it all day, every day, looking for things to buy, and you can see other people are selling these things very successfully because you can literally Really go look at the numbers based on their uh, the listings. Show the numbers. You can run the math right then and there. It's going to help you really understand. Okay, there's a high likelihood of this working. So there's there's oil in the ground. I can see that. But now can. I extract the oil and then can I build systems to really start to run that oil well for me? You got a couple of pay-per-click campaigns running. You got a specific product. You got your listing dialed in. And that thing might run at cash flow positive, five bucks a day, 50 bucks a day, $500 a day at this phase. And so here is, I did have a question. Here's a question. Like, I mean, the, the amount of money you're making at this phase is almost irrelevant, correct? Like it's the fact that you are consistently making money. Like you've built the systems that have an output of daily cash flow. Like that's really kind of the goal we're going to here, right? Yeah. So I like, Honestly, in phase two, if you're breaking even, <clears throat> that's a win. Like, like if you can build out the pump and have customers coming in consistently and you're even just, just like net break even on, on getting a customer, then that is a winning product. And yeah. I know that if you're not familiar with this type of business, 
you're like, okay, well then where, how, how do I actually, where's the money? <laughs> yeah. Like how, what I can't spend break even. Uh, and I understand that the, the thing about it though, is when somebody buys one thing from you, as long as that thing is not like crappy, then usually the trust barrier has gone way up. And especially if you delight them and give them a good experience as they, um, buy it and consume it and, and what have you, then <clears throat> where the money's made is on the second thing, third thing, fourth thing, fifth thing you sell them, which again uh, is an automated process. And that's part of phase three. Yeah. And there's uh, the old adage that the money is in the list and the money is really in the relationship you have with the list. And there's two lists. We're always working with the customer list and the lead list. So anyone who's out there is like, okay, I get that. But Miles, we're on Etsy or we're on Amazon and they own the customer and you're correct. But with a little creative thinking, uh, one of your bonuses that is in with your Etsy product could be a video tutorial. Um, they would need to go to your website and they would need to opt in for it. And there it is for the customer. So we sell uh, Amazon books, Kindle books all the time. And our goal on those ad campaigns, we're often right now we're cash flow negative on every book we sell, just not much, uh, 10, 20 cents here and there type thing. Uh, but inside of the book, there are all of these embedded offers for other free things that they're going to find valuable. And that leads them onto our list. And that's where going and getting these things out to the Amazon marketplace at large, where people are buying books all day, every day, and then leading them back to our MP3s, which you can't get that on the Kindle book. But if they go to the URL in the book, bingo, now they're back on our side of the game. And it's a way to kind of build those lists, even if we're cash flow uh, break even um, on that first kind of front end. Yeah, the 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 key to the whole thing, if even if you're on a platform like Amazon or or whatever, um, where you don't um, have control of the customer, like I know who I buy from generally, and if it's good and I and I see something com come through my feed, even on a on a site like that from the same uh, vendor. seller vendor, then I'll, I'll look at it, right? Yeah. You've got my attention. And that's the, the thing that the real value of, of the thing is, um, hang on, sorry. This is great. My iPad is telling me that I've got a meeting with, uh, uh, nice. This is professionally done. Guys, this is meeting with Miles. Is that what's popping off? Exactly. It's actually team meeting because my team is meeting right now. And I don't even have that on my calendar, but somehow it's on my iPad. Um, but so the the point I'm making is that the 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 value, like when Miles said the value is in your list, that's true. And it's also, in my opinion, in the attention that you have of these people. Like even if they trust you, but they're like, ah, that guy's a kook. They don't, and they don't give you much attention. Then you know, like you're only going to have so much success with that. Whereas if anytime you come across their feed, they're like, oh, this guy's really smart, or oh, this girl has the best candles, or oh, this dude, you know, whatever. Like like if your stuff has made a positive impression on them, then they then they will stop and pay attention to what that thing is. And then you have the ultimate chance to sell them something else, which is so hard today. That's the hardest thing is to garner people's attention for a long period of time. Right. This person brings value in my life. Is that a, so like you become, it's like an association and humans were, were association creatures. And, and when you build that association of this person brings value into my life, when you show up in the inbox, if you show up in the feed, if you just show up on kind of like their past orders list, whatever it is, that's the association we want to build with them um, over time. Perfect. Brilliant. Yeah. And so then phase three is the phase where I call it building the refinery. And this is where... <clears throat> you you have like your factory right and so the the two pieces of the factory um, that I'm talking about are like the customer delivery and service and all that sort of things and then secondarily is where you refine the oil and get the most valuable product out of it so so like um, uh, you have 
some sort of promise that is made to the consumer who purchases your thing. You have to fulfill that promise. So maybe it's a digital product that you're sending them. Maybe it's a small service that you have that gets done for them. Maybe it's um, a physical product, any number of, of things that it could be. You want them to have a seamless experience with you. And then you want to have attentive customer service in case anything does go wrong. And both of those things in 2021 can be 100% automated and done without your personal life force being drawn out to do it, which is great. Um, and then, so that's, that's kind of the first side of things. And the other side of things is that you want to get that oil and refine it into the highest quality, um, whatever it is, you know, like it, like there's, there's, uh, oil that turns into diesel. There's oil that turns into gas. There's, oil, I, you know, I, I can't remember Cosmetics. my, can't remember my thermodynamics class, but like, you know, figure out what the highest value of your oil is mm -hmm. and, and refine it into that. And so what I mean by that practically, like tactically is <clears throat> this is where we were talking about making the second, third, fourth, fifth sale to the customer. And it could be that you're making um, affiliate sales for other people's products. It could be that you're selling more things that you have. It could be that you're selling a higher end thing that you do or have or, or whatever. But this is the point where you, you, you've discovered oil, you've realized, okay, yes, I can get it out profitably or, or at least break even. I've built a machine to do that, to actually get it out of the ground. Now I've got to get it over here into a place where I can make it, um, you know, usable for the person who's driving their big gas guzzling SUV. And also I want to be able to, you know, sell them more of the gasoline or, or which is I, my analogy is to make it the highest value use or whatever, but right. you're, you're, you're building in these automated processes to try and make more sales and increase the lifetime value of that customer. So one other way to think about it is like how many ways can you repurpose what just proved to work, right? So we, by that point in time, we've proven that there's oil that we can get the oil out of the ground. So maybe it's an ebook that you start with. Um, in fact, there's books on the market today that started out as tweet storms. The tweet storm got extended into a blog post. The blog post got extended into a book and then the book got made into an audiobook. And now he has courses around that same content. And it's the same idea. Literally, the, it, what started as 140 characters was a compelling enough hook, a compelling enough big idea. And it was the number of different ways that they were able to kind of iterate these things. In a purely Amazon example, people buy the Kindle book and the audiobook because they read and listen at the same time. So it's literally there's there's the opportunity to make two sales with the exact same content repurposed in different ways. And I think what I want to highlight, because I think that's like not necessarily the highest value of time usage uh, or not necessarily the highest reward potential. Um, but as you mentioned, there's like getting it into the courses. There's what's the highest potential value medium or kind of experience for someone to go through that content. Um, it could be a, a weekend live Zoom workshop that could be valued at hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. It, then that recording could be recorded and sold forever and ever, ever at 197 to for whatever that value is. And here you are taking that same content that's proven to work and you're building more and more systems and essentially more and more kind of spin-off products from that same core idea. And at some point you really, the machine's running, the, the oil well's pumping, the customer service is dialed, the pay-per-click ads work, like the machine just works and you kind of are extracting at, at capacity. Uh, it, it might not be max capacity, but there's a point where trying to get more out of that same oil well can actually hinder the results beyond a certain point. And this is when we habitual serial entrepreneurs, uh, Kevin and I like, all right, well, what's next? You know, and, and at this point, we really don't have to look far because 
through the process, you're building up all these ideas of other oil wells you can test. And generally we've got a few testing it at the different phases. And it's kind of like, what do I want to work on today? And stacking up a portfolio of these oil wells gets us into that idea that I've mentioned a couple of times of like the oil field. And sometimes it's selling lots of things to the same customer. And other times it's going into a totally different area because you're interested in it or you want to flat out diversify or you just tested something on a whim and it clicked. And you're like, okay, like now I have this going on. And I think the, the most successful students in here are those who go through the process fully with one because it takes a lot of focus and energy to really get all like in the first time you go through it it feels like there's a lot of bits and pieces going on it feels like there's all these things but once you've gone through the full cycle once and then the full cycle again the pattern plays out and that's why my most recent businesses and websites have been able to get to 10 grand a month drastically faster than my first ones i'm not doing anything different i'm just skipping all of the annoying things i've messed up on the first ones, which is, that's what Kevin and I want to help you do in, in this kind of course here is to like, we're going to lead you, but go through the full cycle with one. And then do I add more products to this? Am I owning this customer list? Can I take, is it, is it going to be a better risk reward to stick with this and add on spinoff products? Or is it time for another one? Um, I kind of tangentialized that, but I want to throw that back to you, Kevin, and see how that rubs you. Yeah. So I think that that's it. Like um, there's horizontal or vertical, right? And what I find is that my personal preference is I, I try to take these oil wells vertical to a certain point, And then I usually get bored uh, or distracted by another idea. Like I'm what's called a polymath. I have like very, I have varied and many interests. And so I, you know, like I play the piano, the guitar and video games with my son. I have motorcycles, boats, and, you know, am like obsessed with crypto stuff right now. Like, like I you're kind of a marketing geek. You're kind yeah, of a serial yeah. entrepreneur. Yeah. Maybe yeah. A little. Yeah, I've got all these different things going on. And to me, ultimate pain would be like having to do the same thing over and over every week for the rest of my life. That would be just ultimate pain. So, so what I find as my recipe, some people, some people want to just have like, they need a, a schedule and consistency in regimented life. And, um, like, like if, if they operated like my wife, if my wife operated like me, she'd go nuts. Right. She just, she doesn't like, she needs a, she has a day timer from the nineties that she still uses, you know, cause she's just got to have her stuff together. And for me, I wake up every morning and I'm like, ah, oh, I wonder what I want to do today. You know, if I have, if I have a call on the calendar, I feel like, okay, Busy I'm getting day. like, <laughs> The, the boa constrictor is getting tied here, you know? Um, so because of that, I find that there's some sort of natural um, depth that I dig the oil well, and then I just let it pump and, yep. and then I move on. And I know that I've left millions of dollars in the ground because of that, but I'm okay with it. You know, this right. is, this is not this business just so that, uh, Miles and I are clear. This business is not the business that is like maximize dollars in bank account at death. This business is more like maximize creativity and lifestyle and, and, lifestyle and ability to do whatever you want. You know, right. um, like I don't need F everybody money because right. I already have it. Right. It's like, like the, the, that's to me, the big, um, <laughs> like somebody thinks, Oh, you got to have 50 million. You know, I know a guy that just sold his company for 40 million after selling his other company for 30 something million. And, and his, his thing is about having a few money and he's a great guy and I like him and respect him and all this stuff, but I don't think it takes 30 or $40 million to have a few money. It oh, just yeah. takes, it just takes having the freedom to not be beholden to anybody to where you have to kiss their ass to be your customer, right? Or right. your client. And, and these cash flow systems are the ultimate replacement for 
a ridiculous net asset value of kind of like a net worth number, right? So yep. the 4% safe withdrawal rate and $10 million in the bank. Okay, well, you could just set up enough oil wells that can spit out that much cash flow for you hands off and you're there. You might not have the 10 million in the bank, but you have a lifestyle that might actually indeed be uh, more enjoyable and offer more time freedom and location freedom than someone who does run that large of a company who's trying to exit. And um, there's there's aspects of that that's a total nightmare to me. Versus well, the I, I would say too, if, you're, if your thing that you've built is truly providing value to people, then your like 4% of 10 million is 400,000. So right. that's like 35 grand a month or whatever it is, 33 grand yep. a month. Um, so if you are truly providing value to people, I would posit that you are in a much more stable position. If you have something that's throwing off 30 grand a month from your businesses passively, than the person who has $10 million sitting in the bank, right. because with just a static asset throwing off tiny cash flow like that, they have principal risk. Like Huge. if the country prints another three trillion dollars on a win, valuation risk. Yeah, yeah. All these mm -hmm. different problems. Oh, so am I going to steal it from me? You know, they don't. Whereas, you know, if you you've got like a a book that you wrote that's on Amazon that's making you two hundred dollars a month in royalties, like that's that's. Good. I mean, I got that. Like, right, yep. like I've got books I I had written for me. 11 years ago that make me about $250 a month. And right. I'm not even proud of them. <laughs> I'm kind of a little bit ashamed of, of some of them, but they still print me money. Right. And, and right. so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that I think people, people are mistaken about what they think it takes to truly have that ability to not care. Yeah. I 100% agree. So let's wrap this up. I'm going to do a quick um, like overview, but I'd like to, if you can help me and the viewer, like what is the, how do you know when you're ready to transition from one to the next? So what are like the signs? What is, what is the, what am I going to be feeling looking for when it's like, ah, okay, now I'm ready to move on to stage two. So to run through them real quick, um, the discovery phase, like, is there oil here? Can I get it out of the ground profitably? That's the testing phase. Um, then part two is building the pump, which is um, building the actual mechanisms to get out the traffic and conversion. And then number three is refinery. It's like all about the systems to automate it at the absolute highest level you can and maximizing to get as many different valuable uh, products out of the refinery, the cosmetic oil, in addition to the diesel, in addition to the gasoline and on and on and on. So when someone is in phase one, a lot of testing going on, how do they know when it's like, okay, it's time to build a pump around this thing? How do they know when they've, when they've found something? Okay. So a couple of things I'll oil. say. Yeah. So a couple of things I'll say, I completely 100%, 1 million percent disagree with a lot of the advice that people give about how to test. Okay. So people say, you know, do a survey of your followers and ask them if they would buy this or this or this, or they say, you know, look at what other people are selling or like you, the, all that is bad because um, ultimately uh, doing a survey, if you're asking people, would they buy things? There are so many reasons that you get false positives there. Not the least of which is that people don't want to have conflict with you. So they'll tell you right. yes, even though they really say no. If you're looking at what other people are doing, you don't know the full story and you don't know the, the, assets that they have or the advantages your list is <clears throat> or the advantages that they have that you don't have right like right. there there could be like an endorsement that they have from some insider company that's making something sell that like i i know a guy <clears throat> who can't make paid traffic work for his stuff um but he um uh makes sales all the time because he is endorsed by industry, um, uh, like the companies within the industry, they bring him in to speak to their employees and tell them who are, who are contractors and then tell them you need to work with this guy. And so these guys are very beholden to their employee, you know, to their, their uh, it's a, it's, I don't want to tell what industry, but basically 
the, 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 the head honcho says, Hey, this, this guy's speaking today, you need to sign up with him. And then, the, you know, they're pretty much like at, uh, at least a disadvantage if they don't. And so, you know, you could never compete with that guy because right. he has relationships with all these owners of these big mega billion dollar companies. You can't, you can't like know that. Right. But, but that's how he has a, an eight figure coaching business in this realm. And, and uh, so those are the kind of things that you don't know going in. So the, 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 the number one way to go from, step one to step two is, is do I make sales to people who don't know me, like me and trust me already? Can I make a sale to someone who is not my grandmother, right? It's called a stranger. Can I that's, sell my stuff to strangers? That's right. And if you can, then you're ready to move on probably, unless it is, there is something that is tremendously cost prohibitive in how you make the sale. Like if you're making a sale of a $50 product or ebook and it's costing you $500, then you might want to, to look at that. Um, and we can get into the, to the tactics of what you need to do to, to figure that out. But if you can make a sale, even at a loss, <clears throat> but, but like, if you can make, make a sale within 2x the price of your thing or less, then you've probably got a gusher. If you know, uh, but are you you've definitely got oil and you can definitely get it out at break even if you can make a, a front end sale at 2x or less. And then once you get into phase two, you'll find out if it's a gusher by figuring out if you can make multiple sales. Yep. So, so if you and, can lower the cost per conversion and if you can uh, conversion rate optimization, if you can test new headlines and new sales copy, and that's where, um, so now you've, you've proven that the market values the thing in, uh, within a reasonable tolerance of, of what your goal is, which is break even or better is kind of like the goal. Um, and then, so part two is like, okay, so my pump runs, it's just running inefficiently at this yeah. point. And how do I start to optimize the pump? How do I start to work on this thing to where I am indeed getting uh, better values? So it could be uh, shifting from the platform to off the platform with traffic that you own, setting up your own sales funnel, because maybe we get rid of the Etsy commissions and maybe we get rid of the, the those costs per click and we sell direct to consumer on a platform like that's one of the potential ways. Um, sales copy bundling. Uh, I've seen several times, sometimes kind of uh, bundling. I would also rephrase that as like enhancing the offer, making the offer more irresistible and potentially increasing the the cost or the the potential profit for you in that. So, and and again, we'll get we'll get into it. But but I love this idea that like, can you sell things to strangers? even if it's a loss leader, we'll call it in the beginning, um, yes or no, it's kind of binary, right? And then once yes, then it's like, okay, can we optimize this thing to be break even or better and spit off a list somewhere that we own? Is that kind of like, would you call that phase two? Or so how, well, what's phase two? And then when, when, what's that transition to three look like? Yeah, so, so phase one, oftentimes what I do is I will make, what I call like the unscalable offer um, where, and we've talked about this a lot, but the idea is I'll, I'll price it low. I'll promise high. And I just want to get that validation that somebody sees enough, like shows enough interest and sees enough value in this to reach in their back pocket, grab that piece of leather get that piece of plastic and type in all those digits. You know, that's yeah. to me is still the magic of everything, right? It's one and, of the most difficult things in the world to do is to get a stranger to pull out their credit card on a website and give you money. That's it, right. It is, it is incredibly difficult. And being on Etsy, so it makes it a little easier, right? People buy on eBay and Etsy and th there's brand value there. But boy, when you even take it to your own, um, you know, mysecurehomepage.net and you're making sales from there, it is a, I think the, the newer generations don't uh, honor how, how amazingly difficult that actually is to get someone to it's trust a miracle. you to buy something. I, 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 it's like a miracle, you know? And so, so, so I get like a, um, a proof of concept sale or two in phase one. And then in phase two, I'm trying to get it 
to production level stuff. So I, I start to pull back on the promises. I start to inch up the price while sending traffic, you know, and, and get to that point where, okay, we're able to make sales at the, the you know, this seems like the price here and this seems like the, the promise here. And by, you know, if it say, say we're talking about a physical product versus digital, well, I'm talking about like, okay, are we giving free shipping or not? What's the, you know, what's, the, what's the price on this thing? What are the things we're throwing in as bonuses? All so, so, so there's this sort of sliding scale of stuff that you're changing and testing and doing all that stuff as you are sending more and more traffic. And so during this period, what you're doing is you're really sort of narrowing down this thing and, and getting the front end. This is the, this is the tip of your spear, right? This is, yeah. this is the front end of your thing. You're getting it to where it's optimized for the, you know, the, the, the number of customers and the, and the value of a customer, like the, the, you know, the price that you can bring them in. Like some people, if they have bigger goals, they might, you know, promise more and keep the price lower and then know that they've got a back end that's going to do this stuff. But generally speaking, I try to sort of have a, have it in the middle at first and try to bring them in at break even, or maybe a little profit. And, and then once I'm doing that consistently and I'm doing it in lightning striking every day. So in, the, in step one, you make lightning strike. Yep. Step two is like you make lightning start striking every day. Right? right. And that's what step two is about is just to get lightning striking every day to where it's, it's, it's working, it's predictable, it's affordable and so on and so forth. And if you're getting a hand, if you're getting one, two, three, five, seven sales a day, and you're making even small amounts of money, like cash flow positive. So let's say you're a little above break even, you're making cat like you're actually building your war chest at the same time. Because this front end, this is not where we pay mortgages. This is this is the money that goes right back in to the oil well, to the next level of systems, to automation, to vert all of the bits and pieces and or to more traffic to find out, okay, so we're doing three sales a day. Can I do nine? Does, does more traffic without going out of pocket without pulling out of your bank account. It's yep. a process of reinvesting the profits, reinvesting into this oil world to get it to a certain point and then letting it spin. I love the lightning strike. Can you just freaking sell something to strangers? Um, part two being get that lightning striking daily and getting to where your like worst case scenario is break even, but you want to start to see profit margins showing up in this portion. Yeah. So phase three is where you take some of the lightning strikes and you stick some sticks down to it and light it on fire and make a torch. And then you're able to take that torch and light a bunch of other fires. Yeah. And then you've got heat all the time. Right. And, and so that's the, the thing. So like, if you can get, if you can get a business that's making five sales a day, you're probably going to have like a six figure business. 100%. Like, like you're, you're, if, if you're making five sales a day at break even, you're going to be able to parlay that into 10 grand a month, I bet, at least. And, and I agree. And I think there, there's a psychological reason why that is. And it's overlooked, especially when people are in the weeds of conversion and all they can think about is making the sales is like these people, the human beings who just saw enough value in that thing that you're presenting, they're buying all kinds of other stuff on Etsy or they're buying all, they're buying all kinds of other stuff online because your thing is one step on a journey from where they are to where they want to be. And they're going to buy a whole lot more than just that, whether it's golfing stuff and they want to hit the ball longer, straighter and harder. Okay. Here's one thing I'm going to get, but that's not the only thing they're going to get. They're going to get the swivelly widget ball striker and the balance magnet and the, the one legged golfer sales letter. They're reading that one. Um, especially, and I think certain niches, certain niches are, are different than others. And there's, they're, they're called hyperactive buyers, right? Like literally people segment out their hyperactive buyers because there are voracious consumers in absolutely every space. And that's the point of the spear that, that Kevin was just talking about, right? So this one thing, this is just your, your in, this is your foot in the door with what could be a flood of voracious buyers. And in part three, in phase three, that's where you're like, okay, how do I repurpose this? How do I, what do I, what other things can I offer these individuals 
What other offers can I present to this same group of people who are uh, clearly valuing this thing to the point of me seeing all of these daily sales um, while continuing to refund, refine that one um, to take less time and energy out of you so you can focus on more products for these people. And that's kind of the, the going deep with the oil well idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And ultimately, you know, a lot of this sounds probably like, oh man, this is, I know you probably, it feels like you're far away from the money maybe, but it happened. It can happen quickly. Like yes, it, the, the thing that you got to figure out is you, you it, it's, it's so um, tempting to want to build websites and, and do all that stuff. But I would just implore you to stick to the phase that you're in until you get that, that right um, uh, feedback. Because once you get it, then you're going to be doing a lot of work fast. Yep. And you're going to be like, believe me, once, once you once you start getting sales every day, then you're going to want all this other stuff. So, so yeah. take your time and make sure that you're getting the front end right because the, the, the magic of it is discovering a market and, dis and, and getting that you know, product market fit just right. Because then after that, man, like the rest of it, it's, it's work, but it's, it's, a much more, it's much more of a linear path once you've discovered that, 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 that oil. And, uh, at this point, I know it might seem a bit obscure, but, but trust me, it gets, it gets exciting and then it gets addictive to actually want to do it again and again and again. So Kevin, any last words on this one? No, I think we've sort of beat this horse into the ground. Um, but I will say, um, like there's lots of oil out there. Yes. You don't have to go for, you know, the e E85 ethanol, like don't, don't, uh, don't shortchange that part of the process. Enjoy that part of the process. Cause there is, a, there's a lot, lot, lot of oil out there and um, more than we could ever mine ourselves or, or, or whatever, you know? So, so just know that there's not a scarcity to this. You, you right. spend the time finding the oil wildcatting and trust me, it's a fun, fun process.